introducing Next.js 11, ladies and gentlemen. Next.js 11 has been released today on the Next.js Conf organized by Vercel, the parent company of Next.js. And again, it comes with a bunch of features packed. So let's just take a look at what is new in Next.js. And there is one specific thing I want to get into depth of it, but probably in another video that is known as Next.js Live. And we're going to be reverse engineering that, doing all sorts of stuff. So make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel to get notification when that video is out. I'll be doing a reverse engineering of Next.js Live. It is super cool how it works. Although it has a bunch of bugs, which we'll also discuss, but that gets the job done. All right, so first things first, what is new? Conformance. What does conformance mean? I have no idea. But conformance apparently is something which Google uses internally. You know, you also have a standard definition. Is It's a system that provides carefully crafted solution and rules to support da da da. But it turns out conformance is a specialized ES lint kind of thing for Next.js and not exactly Next.js. I mean, if you go ahead and read this Google's blog, you will see that these guys are working now with Next, Next, Angular, all the, all the popular frameworks out there. And... Uh, it basically is a, is a pretty linter. That's that's what I made out of the whole article and the whole thing. So instead of just your code, it would act like something like ESLint plus TypeScript uh, plus, you know, dynamic checks. If you're using Next.js properly, stuff like these. So th these rules can be enforced, right? So that's conformance. Super cool stuff. One thing I liked about this is that Google has actually worked with the Next.js team and experimented heavily in order to bring this. So I'm pretty sure that this would be super useful in terms of improving the code quality, uh, reducing bugs on build time and, you know, not exactly build, but even on the development time. So that is pretty cool thing. And, uh, you know, like they also say, like ESLint is widely popular among JavaScript developers and Next.js 11 introduced out of the box ESLint support. So that's, that's, that's the thing, right? Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty cool that Next.js now not only just supports great framework out of the box as a great framework, but it also supports great practices, which can be enforced by a linter. So you can see this is how the preview, you know, how it will look like when you have set it up. It will probably come in form of these notifications, little pop ups. But yeah, I mean, you know, they also say like this is still being explored. So that might not be the final iteration, the final version. But that's that's a start. Next up is improving performance. Now, Next.js has been doing some great work with improving performance for hot reloading and things like these since Next 10 itself. And like you see, they also mentioned they have just pushed the performance 24% in 10.1 and 10.2 increases 40% again, which is like a massive number if you think about it in terms of performance. So they also explain a little bit of technical details how they have done it. They have come up with a brand new implementation of Babel Loader for Webpack, done a bunch of stuff. But the overall picture is that it does not require you to do anything. So it's it's a free performance boost which you get. So that's cool. Script optimization. This is something I was thinking about in the conference. Hmm, do we really need this? But now it makes more sense after spending some time with it. And what this is, is that it's a new tag like you would have seen um, you know, Next.js launched image tag with Next 10. With Next 11, they are launching a script tag. So how does this work? Instead of using your traditional JavaScript script tag and then just putting all the attributes like async and lazy loading and stuff like this, what you do is you use the Next.js script tag, you put a strategy as an attribute and you have a couple of actually three values for this, before interactive, after interactive and lazy on load. So what they say is that before interactive is things which are critical to your startup execution, right? And they, they will be executed before the page is interactive. So these are, you know, some of the examples which they mentioned, but for the most part, I believe no website really needs JavaScript on a before interactive way, right? If you're opting in after interactive or lazy on load makes more sense because you want the HTML to appear as soon as possible. That's how you will have the first contentful paint to the user, super great performance. And then, you know, when the user is just browsing a website a little, seeing the content, then you can quickly load the JavaScript in the background. That's what the default is as well after interactive. So these 
when you use the script tag and do not use strategy then it will automatically load it once the dom is ready and i think the page yeah and and will run after hydration so this is also important right so what they are doing is these scripts by default will only run when the react um virtual dom and react hydration has also completed so this is important right if you're if you're just putting it in footer or if you're putting it somewhere then it is possible that you might be loading a script before react and that might not be a good thing for the user if they want to interact and stuff do anything with your website but if you put after interactive next chase will internally take care of the thing that your script should load only after react has also loaded and react has re rehydrated your page and then there's lazy on load for scripts that can wait to load during idle time such as chat support and social media widgets so it's it's more like uh, when your browser is idle in the phase that it's not processing any javascript or it's not downloading any critical resource then you can load that particular script and they also give you example like you know analytics chat support things like these no analytics goes actually in after interactive but lazy on load goes in more of a a widgety thing which is required but can wait for a couple of seconds next up are a couple of improvements to images the image tag you know already was there from next 10 but it has improved even more the first thing i can see is that now if you are importing an image from your local file system you don't need to specify width and height so that's a relief that means nextjs can now just calculate on its own what's the width and height is but only if it is local right so that's important I won't say like super useful for a lot of big sites because for the most part they won't be using any image from the local file system but it's great um addition i think you know if you're developing a local project you don't need to just mess your head around with width and height all the time but yeah i mean for the most cases for any website which is operating at a a little bit scale at a little bit scale which is you know not small or you know just just basic project this would not be that much useful but that's fine that's that's a good start then they also have image placeholders now which is pretty cool which i liked that the image is now blur and then come to life and this is because you would have some data about the image if that is a big one but maybe like not all the data so what you can do is instead of just painting a fuzzy image you actually blur that the browsers provide apis and the you know not exactly apis but the images i think there are a couple of formats which load in this way and nextjs can now take advantage of that and once you add a placeholder blur to your image tag this effect would automatically kick in so it's a, it's kind of like a no brainer for the most websites for performance improvements and enhancements you can also go one step ahead and provide provide a blur data url if you want but probably an overkill for again for for big sites but if you if you're a designer and you know you you're fancy you want to do stuff then sure i mean the option is there so that's that's a good thing webpack 5 already existed in nextjs 10.2 but now it is the default thing so you don't explicitly have to opt into webpack before you had to do you know that future and webpack 5 true thing that's now enabled by default so that's cool next also introduce this create react app migration which is pretty cool i would say this is just a code mod a code mod is just a script which can just modify your code base from one state to another which might require a lot of manual effort so what they do with this code mod is basically take your create react app try to create try to recreate your create react app into a nextjs project so they might be i don't know how they exactly work but they might be creating an abstract syntax tree of your whole application then figuring out the router stuff moving that router part to pages in a directory moving the css to the same pages directory things like these so they would be figuring that out but it will be fun to play this with a uh, i would say like a blank repo or a mini project just to see how this works like they say this feature is currently experimental this has to be experimental for a long time because people have all sorts of configurations and things and you know things going on in their even in their basic projects so you don't you cannot really cover everything in, in the first release so that's why this is experimental and you can just leave a feedback on their github discussions if you want now comes the part which is super new revolutionary and you know 
that mind-blowing kind of thing which was announced in the conference which is Next.js Live. Now, what Next.js Live is, I'll just give you a quick example. I won't really explain what they're doing in this in this small blog post. They also have a dedicated page for Next.js Live, but I'll just show you what these guys are doing. So I deployed a simple website which supports Next.js Live, right? Pay close attention to the URL. The URL looks like this. I'm gonna change this Vercel.app to Vercel.live, right? Now, what's happening is that it's loading this page, it's downloading the code. When it says it's loading, at that time it's actually downloading the code of this Vercel website, which I have deployed, right? And you see my cursor is also funny. It's not a regular cursor. You can see this is a, this is a nice little drawer which I can move around as well. And if I click on this code, suddenly what I'm able to see is, let me just zoom out a little. Suddenly what I'm able to see is that I have a text editor on the left. So this is like live coding for Next.js on Vercel infrastructure. And if I go ahead and for example, let's just go ahead and open this in a new tab. Let's say this is another person on your team, right? This is another person on your team. So what they can do is uh, this is me, right? And you can see me twice because I'm well, I'm using this website for two parts as, as a second person as well. But you can see both of our cursors are here. Both of these tab cursors are here. And this pretty much resembles how the Next.js conf was also working, right? And if I use my arrow keys to switch tab, you will be able to, you know, see it in a much more, much better way. So you can see that I can go ahead and just play around this a little, with the code base as well, I can just go to this inspector and click on this. It will open that in the code base and I can start editing stuff, right? And that immediately appears at the other end as well. Super cool stuff, super awesome stuff. I really like it, but uh, a couple of things like, you know, I have now three of these, but I'm actually open just, I have just opened it in two windows. So that's, that's a bug. But another thing which I saw, which I was really, really looking forward for, is that will Next.js actually do a collaborative editing inside editor, right? So if I edit stuff here, will this stuff, I mean, it updates on the website, but will this stuff be updating um, on the editor as well? So if I do a 3232, three, you can see that part does not work at the moment because this is like, this will this might require operational transformations and things like these which happen in real time collaborative editing but yeah i mean for the most part this is a pretty cool thing that now you can just change your versal.app to versal.live send your link to the team and uh, just get started with stuff my take on this is that this is cool but versal probably has a strategy behind doing this update i mean this this works and this is awesome and this is great but what this would also do is this will promote more and more team members to join your Vercel deployment group. Now, because I'm saying that because if you open this in a new tab, you will see that it says your authentication required, right? And when you log in with Vercel, you need to be the part of the team which has deployed this, correct? And Vercel pricing, the way Vercel pricing works is that you have to be paying like $20 a month for a single team member. So it's a seat based pricing. So on that front also, I would say like on a business front, this decision makes a lot of sense for Vercel that they have introduced this feature because now you don't only just need developers on the Vercel account, but also designers. So that's that's pretty clever if you ask me. But yeah, this is, this is I like this feature. You can draw stuff, you know, and that will be also <laughs> sent across. You can leave some chats like this looks awesome right and if i switch out and i say like myself i say to myself thanks so that's that's cool right yeah i mean that's that's <laughs> that's it about i think Vercel next js conf for 11 and pretty awesome updates nice updates they have shifted to react 17.0.2 as a minimum framework so that's fine. 
but this is like you know this steals the show next year's life and i would probably do a little bit of more debugging not debugging a little bit of more of digging into next year's life take you guys through the reverse engineering part of how this actually works and uh, yeah let's let's see how that works in some other video but that is all for this one if you liked it make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel thank you all for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon